Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another kind of tutorial. Uh, I'm Ryan, and uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, today I'm kind of uh, wanting to just switch things up a little bit from a tutorial and um, uh, kind of just wanted to talk about something I'd like to talk about more often, and that's kind of the workflow I do every day as a freelancer dealing with clients, um, managing multiple projects. And what we're talking about today, one of the most important things is rendering and render times. And today I'm gonna to talk about some of the steps I like to take to sort of speed up my rendering and um, also kind of speed up the rendering once you have a project already going. If you have, let's, like let's say you have a 30 minute project and you just need to render out 10 seconds of that, ways to get around not having to render the whole thing over each time. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the product that I like to use. I, I'm not pushing this product in any way. I don't get paid for it. I'm not sponsored or anything, but let me go ahead and switch over. It's it's from AE Scripts. It's called BG Render Pro. Let me go ahead and pull that up here. And BG Render Pro, it's it's just an awesome script-based um, application here that you uh, you drop it down in your menu and it renders your projects in the background. But here's the kicker, and I'm still in CC 2014, and they kind of have the multi-processor rendering still going. But what this does is it uses your cores better than I feel like multi-process rendering does anyways. And uh, your mileage may vary depending on the specs of your computer, but I just wanna mention that this is what I use every day. Um, I either render uh, to frames or render to a movie, but it renders in the background. It, it seems to utilize my processors better, and it's just what I use in my workflow. Um, and I also encourage you to take a look at the features that the script gives. I mean, it can give you notification when your render is done. Uh, it can send you a text, send you an email. Um, it seems to you know, really utilize machines that have multi-cores and uh, there's just a lot of awesome features that you don't get with the standard render. And so what I did is, you know, let's go ahead and I can just show you what that script looks like really quick. So let's go ahead and take a look really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the background render script here. And this tutorial really isn't about the uh, background render script. We're talking about speed and rendering in After Effects. So um, I just wanted to show you quick how simple the script is. Um, you have your options here for multi-processing. If you have a multi-core machine, it's gonna use those and utilize it um, to its potential and also maximize the RAM as it renders as well. Um, and there's just some really nice options here that, you know, maybe I'll do a tutorial specifically on this, but this is, uh, this is what I use and um, this is why I think it can help with your workflow. So let me go ahead, I'm just gonna turn this off and what I did is I have this project here that has um, motion blur, depth of field, some film grain, almost a minute spot. And what I did is I rendered this project four different ways. I used, let's bring out the little benchmark desk out here. I used the standard renderer, the standard renderer with multi-processing and I'll show you my settings. Uh, the background render script, and I also render the project out to frames. So real quick, um, let's just kind of look at the times really quick, and you'll see lower is better here. So the standard renderer, just uh, you know, clicking render in After Effects, not tweaking any of the settings. This project took a little over an hour and a half. It took an hour and thirty-two minutes, which is crazy if you, you know if you have deadlines and stuff you got to get done. So let's move on to standard render with MP on, and that's that's multi-processing, and I'm still currently in a CC 2014, I have not upgraded because of the, and I know they're working it out, but the bugs and the issues they were having. So let me show you my settings, and what my computer is, I have an i7 eight core with 64 gigs of RAM, and what I did for this test, and I know there's tons of theories and philosophies, and all that good stuff on how to set up multi-processing. And I know multi-processing is gone now in the updated version of CC. So the script might be another uh, option for you to look into if you want some faster rendering. But I'll go ahead and show you my settings. And this is what I did. I have 16 cores, so eight cores, eight threads. You know, it's seen as 16 cores. And what I did is I had, I basically set render and I didn't have anything open. I had no other applications running, nothing. I didn't reserve any CPUs for any other programs or applications, and I set the RAM to three gigs per core. Um, I have enough memory that I can get away with that number, but I want to make sure that the actual CPU numbers were the maximum amount of cores that I have. So, so if I start bumping up these numbers, you'll see that it's not actually using 
all of the cores. So I looked at at three gigs for my example, and you know it, it did really well. And and you know it came in at about let's see, I'm looking at the exact numbers here. It came in at 34 minutes and 39 seconds, which I mean compared to the standard render is absolutely nuts the time that you save on that. So let's get down to the script now. Now the script here, uh, the advantage of the script is again if if it's easy to use, it's fast, you don't have to worry about any of the numbers or like trying to figure out cores per RAM, it, it just works right out of the box. You click go and I ended up with the time of 35 minutes, which again, compared to standard render, doing awesome. This might be also a great option for those people who are up on to, uh, CC 2015. You have those multi-core machines, but you don't have the option to um, adjust the multi-processing, so something you might wanna look into. Now the last one here that actually had the lowest time, but only a little bit of uh, 33 minutes and 36 seconds was rendering it to frames. Now, why would you render a project to frames? Well, I actually render to frames the majority of the time. And when I say render to frames, what I'm doing is I'm adding this to the render queue and I'm selecting multi-machine settings and I'm going to either PNG or JPEG depending on uh, what I need to do. And what this does is it renders out my project to frames. So here we are. So what rendering to frames looks like is it just like how it sounds. I'm rendering one frame, um, to one image sequence uh, for the whole project. And so what my folder now looks like is just a ton of image sequences. Um, and uh, the reason this can be very helpful is kind of like what I mentioned um, if you're rendering and let's say for some reason, you know, the client comes back and makes a change saying, you know, for this, this example right here, for example, this says, uh, you know, redeem for rewards. Let's say they want to say cash in for rewards and the client's like, well, I want to change that. Well, instead of having to worry about re-rendering the whole project, I know that I'm rendering from frame 277. You know, I'm kind of waiting until that gets out of the frame and then I'm rendering to frame 361. So, you know, in just a hundred frames, I can have a new image sequence going that I can just re-render again and have the project up and running without having to wait, you know, a worst case scenario, 35 minutes. In this example, if, if yours is, you know, a two minute animation, then you're saving yourself a lot of time by not having to render out that whole thing. Let me just go ahead and give you an example of what multi-machine rendering does. And I'm going to actually do it using the script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop down this background render script again. And I'm going to save a background launcher file, which is going to launch uh, multiple instances of After Effects. And uh, post render actions, you know, I'm going to have it make a sound, send me an email, stuff like that. So here we go. So I just, I'm just going to make sure my settings are all in place here. Multi machine settings is going to look for all the frames that already exist and it's going to skip it. It's not going to overwrite the frames. So if I'm run, if I'm rendering frames one through hundred and it's working on frames one through 10, it's not going to overwrite those files. It's going to see the frames that already exist and the next processor is going to go to the next frame. In this instance, I have eight processors. So all those processors are going to be constantly working, searching for the next available frame to keep rendering. So let me go ahead and put this in a new location. All right, so we'll put everything in there. I'll click save. And what I'm gonna get here is I'm gonna click background render. It's gonna say it's gonna to need to save this project, that's fine. We're not gonna launch renderer now, but what it did is it saved an, an executable file that will launch multiple instances of After Effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and it says, do you wanna show me where that file is? I'll say yes. And here it is, here's the command script that's gonna start rendering multiple instances of After Effects. So real quick, let me open up the task manager. And we're gonna go into performance here. And let me switch this to logical processors. So here we go. So I'm gonna open this, make it a little bit larger. And what we're looking at right now is our CPU isn't being used too much and our memory isn't being used too much. So I'm gonna keep rendering an instance 
for every processor that I have. And I can go past eight processors. I can use, you know, multiple processors if I need to. So here we go. It's already creating uh, frames one, two, and three are done. Frame three is done. So I'm gonna launch another instance. And let's see what this one does. So it already skipped all those frames. It started on eight. And I can launch this so I have two up right now. Let's do three, four, five, six, seven. You know, so I have eight instances of After Effects rendering my project in the background. So it's almost like kind of, you know, this is what actually pulled me away from doing a render farm is I, I render like this now because it seems to uh, be really effective, really fast without the overhead or the headache of managing an After Effects render farm. And so if we go ahead and we look at our uh, logical processor here now, our memory starting to get kick, kicked up, our CPU is being more utilized, and uh, you know our render is on the way. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. That's just an example. And you know, um, let's go back to the uh, benchmark here. And so if you're wondering what the script frames time is, that's what that was. Cool. So I mean, a little bit different tutorial today, talking about workflow. Um, that the way that I render, I, I do a lot of frame rendering and I use that background script a lot. And that just, that's something I do every single day. It speeds up my render. I don't even bother with the standard after effects render anymore. And it just cuts those times down more than half. And it's, it's just a great resource to have. So I hope that helps with uh, your rendering. Um, and you know, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, subscribe for more tutorials coming up next week. And as, as usual, let me know if you have any questions. Have a great uh, rest of your Friday. It's a little late here, but we, you know, we're getting it done every week. So talk to you guys next time and have a good one. We 3D tracked it and we have some Z space going on and it just uh, looks pretty cool. We're gonna have our beams follow it no matter where we reposition it.